Elon Musk of SpaceX, Tori Bruno of ULA, and Jeff Bezos of Blue Origin are some of the most powerful men in space. Two are jockeying to be the premier providers to the US government for space delivery and deployment, while the other continues to chase them at any cost. Before we go further, we need to understand why the rise in private space providers and what caused the 40% reduction in NASA funding in the coming decade. It was January 1986. Back to the Future was in theaters, and the Cold War was beginning to warm up. Meanwhile, NASA's shuttle program was bringing the dream of space travel closer to home. Here today to announce the first private citizen passenger in the history of spaceflight. But on a cold January morning, disaster would ground the ambitions of spaceflight. So the 25th Space Shuttle mission is now on the way. This morning, it looked as though they were not going to be able to get off. One minute, 15 seconds. Velocity, 2,900 feet per second. Altitude, 9 nautical miles. Downrange distance, 7 nautical miles. I know it's hard to understand, but sometimes painful things like this happen. It's all part of the process of exploration and discovery. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. The shuttle's busiest schedule ever will be delayed while investigators figure out what went wrong. The Challenger would have flown successfully if the weather at Cape Canaveral had been warm. NASA was not communicating with itself and was keeping some problems secret from top management. While funding was stripped from NASA, the government still had needs to launch in space. NASA faces $3 billion in possible budget cuts. The White House is reviewing the entire manned space program and may substitute something cheaper for the Bush-era rocket system that's currently planned to replace the shuttle. For the next decade, they relied heavily on Lockheed Martin and Boeing to ferry their missions to outer orbit, but there were a handful of private rocket companies beginning to make strides promising a cheaper and more sustainable way for the government to launch missions. And led by industry titans with deep pockets, both SpaceX and Blue Origin were founded to compete with the Goliath, United Launch Alliance to capture both government and industry contracts. While SpaceX has the definitive edge at the moment, Blue Origin has been making great strides after a series of setbacks to include a FAA grounding over safety concerns. After completing a handful of human space tourism missions, they were able to complete a few industry missions in 2023. But Blue Origin did not provide any government launch services for 2022 or 23 as they lacked the required outer completions to qualify for agency missions. All the while, SpaceX was full throttle, launching nearly 100 missions last year and capturing over $4 billion in awarded contracts. During this time, Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin launched an internet satellite service called Project Kuiper to compete with Musk Starlink. While Starlink currently has over 5,500 satellites in orbit and over 2 million subscribers worldwide, they are well ahead of Bezos's ambitions of competition. Bezos only just recently launched his first satellites into space, but not with his own rockets, but rather with help from his good friend and partner, Tori Bruno. On October 6, 2023, Bezos's first satellites aboard a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket were set into orbit. Amazon has until 2026 to get 50% of its satellites into orbit or risk losing its license. So it's a good thing his friend at United Launch was willing to help, considering Blue Origin delayed his newest heavy lifter rocket, the Vulcan, by years. Let me explain, Congress mandated all rocket companies on government missions must use American-made parts. In order to meet that mandate, Tory needed Jeff's BE for engines for his new rocket. In the past, United Launch had relied on the Russian-made AD-180 engines. They agreed upon a 2020 delivery, however, that delivery did not come until 2022. Putting stress on the relationship, as Bezos was dealing with internal strife from within Blue Origin and admittedly absent over the past few years, 
It would seem Bezos, who was recently divorced, had his mind on other things. However, after pressure from the board, a renewed Bezos committed publicly to being more involved in Blue Origin. Now, I am not saying I blame him, just saying he took his eye off the ball and got called out for it. On January 8, 2024, United Launch Alliance lifted its Vulcan workhorse for the first time. And while delayed by two years due to the Blue Origin miss, it would seem Bezos's and Tory's relationship was on the mend, as Bezos quickly secured spots on their launch schedule for his project Kuiper. Meanwhile, Musk is still up to his old ex-antics, but it seems his SpaceX units are firing on all cylinders. They are currently very close to a successful launch of their newest super-heavy rocket-carrying Starship, Though delayed as well, SpaceX pushed nearly 100 rockets into space last year. With news that United Launch Alliance might be on the seller's block, Jeff Bezos is chomping at the bit to buy his way into the fight. He faces stiff competition from two other suspected suitors and will need federal securities approval to purchase. But one thing is for sure, he has the cash to do so. But is that good for the government or space progress in general? Well, for that, I say we look to the moon. And counting. Sequence start. Three, two, one. Zero. All engine running. We have a liftoff on Apollo 11. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. You don't choose your passions. Your passions choose you. This is me in high school. And I want to highlight this quote, the earth is finite, and if the world economy and population is to keep expanding, space is the only way to go. I still believe that. While I still believe Bezos has the passion, it's the execution that I doubt. His track record in space is not strong, and his resume is slim. Yet he seems to be able to use his political connections to gain market share, while lacking any experience or a vehicle to propel him there. But it seems this lack of experience has not prevented him from getting NASA contracts. In one of the lowest class moves I have seen in space, Bezos contributed to the mess that has become Artemis. We are going to the moon, to deep space, and to Mars. Humanity will venture further out into our solar system than ever before. But the history that awaits us requires a first step. This is a story of a mission that represents that essential first step to the moon. A mission that has become the first in a series of increasingly complex missions to expand the bounds of human exploration. Because of the Artemis One mission, we have demonstrated our ability to go farther and faster than ever before, opening the door to explore Mars and other destinations throughout the solar system. Our voyage out into the solar system started with this first flight. And yet, this is but a prelude to what comes next. SpaceX was originally selected to build the lunar lander for NASA to land astronauts on the moon for the Artemis III mission. Later, after complaints by Bezos, Blue Origin and the national team was awarded an additional lander contract for the Artemis V mission by Congress. After initially losing the loan contract to SpaceX, Jeff Bezos lodged a complaint with the Government Contract Ethics Committee and ran to Senator Maria Cantwell to complain about the sole source contract to SpaceX. She was able to slide funding into a bill getting ready to pass Congress. Blue Origin and their partners, the national team, now had a separate contract to build an additional lunar lander at additional cost to the US taxpayers. The national team is the kind of uh, outstanding leadership, outstanding experience that I like to work with. Blue Origin itself brings innovation and uh, modern thinking uh, to the table. Uh, Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman and Draper all bring an extraordinary experience, not only from Apollo, but before Apollo into the present. The HLS is a three element architecture, our design. It consists of a crewed vehicle, an ascent element, 
This has the life support systems for the crew, all the displays, the controls, everything that the crew will do to interact and to land on the surface of the moon. The next element in the architecture is the descent element. This is the landing element. Uh, this was what will actually have the thrusters, the legs, the systems that are going to be able to land those astronauts and give them that safe, comfortable touchdown on the surface of the moon. And so this uh, is being built by Blue Origin and is based off of our Blue Moon uh, lunar architecture. Uh, and then the final element in the three element architecture is a transfer element built by Northrop Grumman. Specifically, the transfer element avionics, its computers, its software, its sensor suites are derived directly from the Cygnus service module. It's particularly relevant as NASA uses that platform to routinely deliver cargo to the International Space Station, and it's the primary heritage source for the transfer element. And so this transfer element is the element that takes the ascent element and the descent element from a deep space staging orbit down to an orbit around the moon where the descent element can then land the ascent element on the surface of the moon. SpaceX is not without its own problems, most recently the catastrophic failure of its Starship on Launch 2, though Elon's reaction on launch day and pending tweets seem to point to this as an expected outcome ending in explosion. Stating that if they had a payload and the rocket was heavier, this would not have happened, but the failsafe performed flawless. In classic Musk fashion, just another happy mistake. So, uh... In fact, ironically, if, um, if it had a payload, it would have made it to orbit. Um, and so I think we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with Flight 3. Both SpaceX and Blue Origin have only showed models of their proposed landers. SpaceX is testing its delivery rocket. Blue Origin hopes to launch its new Glenn rocket in late 2024. Both still need to solve challenges of a refuel and have yet to start on lander engines. Seeing as Artemis 3 is set to launch in 2025 and SpaceX is pending an investigation into the explosion, it's looking like a very long shot they meet the Artemis 3 2025 deadline. While SpaceX has the edge on the rocket race, Bezos has the advantage in infrastructure and teammates who have built for space for years. He has access to things like clean rooms, while SpaceX has yet to showcase one. With Blue Origin's rockets and engines only reaching suborbit, the scales still tip towards SpaceX. But if you made it this far, you are now ready to understand why the United Launch Alliance sale is so important. What Jeff lacks, he can buy. So, it is very likely that he will purchase the Alliance with his existing relationship with United Launch and his deep pockets, he is certainly the top contender. If he succeeds, he will now have a new rocket with a successful launch, flying on his engines, and a staff with decades of experience. While I'm not a fan of Bezos, if he gets this sale, I do believe he can run a company. I 100% believe this is his only ripcord at the moment. His success no longer depends on his friends like Tory or his buddy Miss Cantwell, it again will depend on his execution. But it is my belief if he does get the sale, he will have a real shot at finally competing with Elon. Bezos has caused a lot of issues in space, but at the end of the day, the importance of the Artemis program can't be overstated. We need launch points to explore the solar system and beyond. Regardless of the noise these rich men create, we must remember the spirit of the past. It's all part of taking a chance and expanding man's horizons. It will be hard. We will fail. But we must stay resolute in our commitment to explore the universe. Here today to announce the first private citizen passenger in the history of spaceflight. We cannot let the failures of the past, or those of the future, stand in our way of venturing beyond Earth. There will be many players, some we like, some we won't. But as an explorer at heart, I salute them and look forward to the progress ahead. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. The Challenger crew was pulling us into the future, and we'll continue to follow them.